ESPN College Football Prime Time presented by Hilton. Brad Nessler, Tom Blackledge, Holly Rowan, our ESPN crew in Minneapolis at TCF Bank Stadium where the Gophers on their second possession now following an interception thrown by Jake Rudock. And the Gophers are in the red zone right now with an opportunity to score. And they called timeout before this play. Probably smart. They've had four first down plays so far, only have gained one yard. Lingen, the tight end, sets up on the right side. He's the guy that had the 31-yard reception that got them where they are right now. Leitner throws on the run in the oh, corner. The tight end. He had his tight end crossing the field so wide open. The bottom of your screen, K.J. May in motion on second and ten. Leitner down the middle. He's got May for a first down. It's first and goal for the Gophers. Two times they've gotten the ball to their playmaker, K.J. May runner in this part of the field as well. Michigan with a blitz. Leitner with a rollout has time again and throws this one in the dirt. A total of 65 points the whole season. Straight ahead goes Brooks. Got to the four, maybe inside the four. And it brings up third down and goal. To settle for a three-point attempt. Leitner, their quarterback, has three rushing touchdowns this year's Todd said he's a tough runner. Set the throw here. Maybe, maybe not. And now he's brought down. There's a flag down. Desmond Morgan drops him for a loss. This tight end right here, number 80, is six foot ten. A big target. The run's going nowhere. Lost back to the five by Shannon Brooks and a nice play by Maurice Hurst. Great penetration from Hurst. He slipped into the block of the tackle. Ben Lauer, the left tackle, tried to cut him off, and Hurst was too quick off the ball and made the play in the backfield. And again, this Michigan defense, only 65 points the entire season that they've given up. Great discipline on that third down play. Santoso's 10 out of 13 on the year. This is a 23-yard field goal attempt. And it is good. So Minnesota gets on the board first. Had a golden opportunity to try to get a touchdown there and had to settle for three. As the interim head coach is Tracy Clays. We'll document Tracy a little bit here in a second after Jabril Peppers picks up the ball at the one-yard line after almost fumbling it and brings it all the way out to the 42. This game's been together forever. He's not the only guy that's been with Jerry that long. So, great continuity and consistency with the coaching staff, even with Coach Kill not here tonight. Four and a half remaining here at 3-0 game. Let's find out what's going on elsewhere. Michigan team in their territory. We're second down at two. Rudak, nice play fake. Wants his tight end, and he's got him. See, that's the beauty of having a big target tight end who's got good hands. Butt comes out of the backfield and sets up as the tight end on the left. On the ground, pickup of a couple. It's Derek Green on the carry. Mentioned Tracy Clays, the one of those guys this week. Second and seven at the go for 28. They fake the end around. Rudock's got all day to throw. Finds his man, first down. Good throw decision. to Smith out of the backfield. Real good decision. He was looking for Jehu Chesson on a crossing round. They were going to Minnesota 13. The fullback straight ahead. That's Carriage, one of their captains inside the 10 yard line. That's interesting. You, you just don't see many teams anymore in college football that play with a fullback. And not only does Michigan play with one under Jim Harbaugh, they give them the football. I mean, that run by Carriage was the 26th rushing attempt by a Michigan fullback this year. That's almost unheard of right. in college football anymore. That's the 10th carry by Carriage. Second down and six. They can get a first down around the three. Smith trying to break a tackle. Holding on for dear life is Devondre Campbell. And he brings him down just short of the first down, I believe. Two tight ends in there. Power football. It's a fullback again getting a little sugar, and he's got it first and goal. 
Last time we saw a fullback have two carries on one drive was 1967. <laughs> <laughs> the fullback's carried twice down here. The tailback right now is Davion Smith. It's the fullback again, and it's a Michigan touchdown for Carriage. Three fullback runs. That's Jim Harbaugh football. Well, they get the double team by the right guard and the right tackle. They bring an extra offensive lineman in, and it's just straight ahead. Power drive football. Watch the double team here. The center gets a block and give it to the up back. Snap was a little bit low. They got the hold down. He got the extra point through. And with just 38 seconds remaining in the half, in the first quarter, I should say, Michigan taking the lead 7-3. Was 34, kickoff return was 49. And Mortel, you look behind him as he sends a line drive on the fly. Peppers at the 32, and he's off to the races. Peppers, one man to beat. He didn't beat him. Mortel saved a touchdown. The punter brings him down. But a 41-yard punt and a 41-yard return. Well, this was not a good kick. It was too low. And Peppers was able to field it on the fly. I mean, he didn't even have to make the first guy miss because he was at full speed when he caught the football. And give up a 41-yard punt return and force a punt. That would be a huge feather in their cap. Rudock pressured a little, throws, and this one's complete. He's got a first down. Boy, once again, nice work in the pocket by Jake Rudolph. He knows there's pressure. He takes a major shot. High backfield this time with Smith. They fake it to him, the throw to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. And it's J.U. Chesson. Nice throw by Rudock on that one. Really nice throw. He knew the safety was coming over from the middle of the field, and he throws that ball a little bit short and makes his receiver stop before the safety gets there. Really well done. Duke McGee, number eight, was coming to help from the inside. And Jake Rudock put the ball in the right spot. So Rudock, seven out of 11. His touchdown, the sixth of his season. And it was a strike. Just a 29-yard drive in five plays. J.U. Chesson. That's his first touchdown catch of the year, and it puts Michigan in front 14 to 3. Second down to 10. Brooks trying to pop out the backside. Nice Did. Best run of the night for Minnesota. Shannon Brooks had a big game against Purdue a few games a ago. Playmakers, especially like KJ May, they haven't had a lot of long passes or pass with a run after catch so far this year. Third down, and this time it's two. And Leitner's got the two and a bunch more. That's where he really comes in handy. He's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Pick up of 12. Well, they got James Ross. Brooks got a block from his quarterback and spins his way for another first down. 11-yard gain. Nothing like having your quarterback lead the way. First down at the 14. Leitner keeps it again. Well, he runs right into Peppers and picked up maybe a yard. Second down and nine. Looking left, throwing left, and incomplete. Peppers breaks it up. Bolotarski had a hand on it, just couldn't hold it. Now, Jabril Peppers is truly one of the best defensive football players in the country. We've seen him as a return man. He played one, a couple downs on offense. But this is his natural thing. Down to the four-yard line for a first. May in motion. Leidner goes to the end zone. May had it in his hands, out of his hands. This one, 30 yards on the way and right down the middle. So Minnesota battles back. Good answer. Would have loved the touchdown, but they do cut it to 14-6. With that, Santoso, two field goals. That's where Minnesota's gotten their points. Here's Rodney Smith into the secondary. Best run of the night, all the way out to the 47-yard line. Liner throws on the run. Caught by Scott.
still, and he's still running. Touchdown. Just like that, Minnesota goes 76 yards in three plays. And the capper, Leibner's touchdown pass to number 88. Great move, stiff arm, got a block. That's all she wrote. Michigan 14, Minnesota 13. Minnesota one timeout remaining. Play action, Leibner fires deep in the middle. Tips caught again. An underthrown ball, and this time it's Lingen, the tight end. <laughs> again, Mortel to hold. Sets up show from 32. Tucked it inside the right upright. Three for three. Minnesota, 13 unanswered points in the final seven and a half minutes of half number one. And they go to the locker room at halftime, halfway to the little brown jug. Minnesota in front, 16-14. The Jake Rudock of this Michigan offense at the 25. And Rudock, play action, throws, cuts. And it's going to be a first down, and that's... Well, Amara Darbo has well. got 33 catches now for the year that leads Michigan in receiving Quick throw wide out screen to Chesson so they get those guys involved in back-to-back -back plays just like that seven more yards on the game Peppers is in the slot They give it to him it's an end around double reverse Chesson's got room first down and a bunch more out of bounds around the 34 yard line make it the 33 Rudock looks right and then goes that way and flags fly gonna have either a holding call or pass interference on Jalen Myrick out to Rudock's right Johnson Big opening, first down run off the right side. He's all the way down to the six. Boy, what an impressive opening possession right now. Have to account for him anytime he's on. Shotgun. He's going to take the snap. And Peppers heading to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. First time we've seen him in the wild Wolverine, and he took it six yards for the score. Good execution. Tight end's going to block down. Watch 84 block down. They pull the center and the left tackle, Mason Cole. And then a good hard nose run by Jabril Peppers. Lowers his shoulder and drives into the end zone. Can't ask for better than that from the Wolverines to open up the third quarter on the road. They regain the lead on a 75-yard march in seven plays. And Jabril Peppers says, I'll do this all by myself with a little help from my friends up front. Touchdown, Michigan, 21-16. He's played a lot of plays, both on offense, defense, and as Holly said, special teams as well. Leitner took a hit as he threw it. Got a man open, though, down the sideline is Brooks. Run out inside the 40. Little wheel run out of the backfield by the tailback, and Minnesota's got another explosive play. Well, he was working on Desmond Morgan. Receivers to the left, and now they motion a man as Michigan comes with a big-time blitz, and it pays off. Leidner's decked by Jared Wilson from his safety spot. Well, I'd get right under center and go sneak here. It's less than a yard. Oh, it's third and one, I beg your pardon. Leidner. Leidner. Heading to the end zone. Touchdown. Twenty-four yards for the touchdown for the Minnesota quarterback. Another lead change in Minneapolis. Fourth of the night. A short field. Game now for Michigan. Play action, Rudock all day to throw, and now he's going to run with it. Oh, and he got hit, and a helmet comes off. He was trying to get down. He never made it to the turf. He's on the turf now, and his head coach is coming out in a hurry. 
Jack Lynn, I think, is the guy that made the hit, and it didn't look good. Officials timeout for an injured player. Good decision to run. Get a positive gain. He starts to slide in, out of Richmond, Virginia. He's thrown four passes all year. He's not going to pass here, and the Gophers probably knew that. Drake Johnson with Steven Richardson all over him. Loss of a yard. Spade under center. Play action. Has time. Buys himself some extra time. Got to let it rip pretty soon. And he throws it away. That was really good coverage downfield by the Minnesota Division defense. 34. The lead and the ball, and their quarterback runs for a couple. You know, in our production meeting this morning, Brad, I said... For the junior captain out of Lakeville, Minnesota, has had himself a night so far. Rodney Smith again. Got a couple. Going to bring up third down. In the Big Ten, but the country. Third down and six for the Gophers. They're going to keep it on the ground. They won't get the first down. They get inside the 30. That's about it. They're trying to add to the Minnesota lead. Got another one. 47 for Santoso. The Gophers lead by five. 11.43 to go. We got a good one brewing in Minneapolis. You don't want to turn it over. They haven't so far. I wouldn't throw around number five. He jumps up to the line. Leitner running out of time again. Look out. Down he goes way back around the 11. And did you see who they put Jabril Peppers on? Did they grab the face mask as they tackled Leitner? They had him wrapped up nowhere to go with the ball might have been the body slam at the end of the play they put peppers on the tight end lingan and he covered him like a blanket and that's where leidner was trying to go with the football there is no foul yeah. on the play so they picked the flag up that you know, I, I think that's a good call. Delano Hill, number 44, is going to hit him at the end of the play, but not on purpose. The tackle's made by Ross. He's down, and Hill's trying to jump over the pile and kind of hit him with his leg. Yeah, he was trying to get out of the way. Yeah. You're right. Good call. Ryan with Wilton Spade. Good field position, first down. Here it comes, but he hasn't completed one all year. He has now to his tight end butt. Before that play, Michigan had only had 46 yards on their last four drives. See that end zone on the goalposts instead of being 75 yards away. Back to the ground game. Top second effort. Maybe got Davion Smith a couple of yards. They do have a first down at the Minnesota 28. Spate. Throws complete to another tight end, Khalid Hill. And Hill picks up seven or eight as we check in with that man. Throws on first down, second down and short. Good way of managing the young quarterback. Now it's Drake Johnson trying to follow his blockers and does it nicely to the 12-yard line. Jake Button, by the way, the tight end's back in there. His vision, big targets. They're nice things to have. Spate in the gun. From the 12, they keep it on the ground, and inside the 10 goes Drake Johnson. A direct snap coming up to number five. He's already scored one time tonight from six yards out. This time, looked like he wanted to throw. He'll pull it down and lose a couple. He was looking for Jake Budd. Minnesota had him double covered. Five minutes to go. Play action, Spate throwing to the end zone. Got his man! Touchdown, Michigan! And it's J.U. Chesson. 12-yard touchdown pass by the backup quarterback who hadn't completed a pass all year until this fourth quarter. Well, first of all, they put 
six offensive linemen in here. They took the tight end butt out and brought another lineman in to have great protection and spate through it on time to Chesson. That's the second time Chesson has scored out of that stacked formation running the post. The same formation. Empty set. Three wide outs to the top of the tailback. Down to the bottom of your screen for Spate. Waits and waits. Throws at the last moment and got it for the two-point conversion to Darbo. Well, this is a quarterback that is starting to feel good about himself on this drive. He's looking left all the way on this. Watch his eyes. Left, left, left. Start to scramble. Eyes go right. Two-point conversion. Good. There's one out of him right now. Third down and 17. And that's May in motion. They fake it to him. Middle screen. Rodney Smith broke out of there, and he wow. might have a first down. What an effort by Rodney Smith. There were two Michigan Wolverines that were going to stop this for a very short game. Minnesota running back, and on third and 17, it goes for 17 and about six inches. And here's the guy that got it, and now he bounces outside. Nice stiff arm, good run. Right out of 318 as he goes out of bounds. In the backfield with Leidner. K.J. May in motion. Leidner fires and what a catch by May we just said he'd only had one grab in the half a 14 yard strike that time from Leiter what? both tight ends shift over to the left side Leiter in the gun Michigan thinking about a blitz they bring it leiter has got to get rid of it way before he wanted to the blitz paid off Taco Charlton got in there got pressure on him and it's fourth down here's the play of the game Again, the pressure coming. Leidner down the middle. Oh, what a catch wow. by K.J. May. Wow. There is no way he gets this ball, but somehow he did. That's two catches in a row on Jordan Lewis, who has excellent coverage. Plays. Leidner's going to keep. Tripped wow. up, or he might have had a first down. Now, that had to be Peppers again, right? It was. I mean, that was a big play potentially a touchdown if not for Jabril Peppers. Watch number five just flash and catch the ankle of Leidner. Leidner, pump fakes, wants it all. Goes to the corner, got it! Olatarski, touchdown! clearance that the ball did not break the plane of the goal line so they'll put the ball at that spot and they're going to wind the clock well, wind the clock that only has 19 seconds left and Minnesota's but, only got one timeout yeah, left I, I think maybe they use the timeout here I wouldn't rush a play here either that or you know exactly what you want after review the receiver caught the pass but was down short of the goal line it will be Minnesota's ball first and goal at the one half yard line that close if they're gonna wind the clock you have to be ready to go and maybe save that timeout run one play here and if you don't get in on this play then you use a timeout Leidner under center remember he's already run for one touchdown tonight they got a full house backfield behind him the center judge is gonna trot out of the way there goes the clock. There goes the clock. 17, 16, 15. Now they shift. Liner's oh going to go into the gun with 10. Clock. Nine, eight. Got a hustle. Liner rolls to throw. He's in trouble. Lobs it incomplete. And there's only two seconds oh. left in the game. Boy, I don't know if Leidner knew that they were winding the clock. Because that play and all the shifting took so much time. And Jim Harbaugh was racing down the sideline to call timeout. And good thing for him that he didn't. they didn't get the call. And now Minnesota takes its final oh, timeout. It's a penalty or it's over. And they're that close to the goal line. Leidner under center. Full house behind him. He'll try to do it himself. Did he get there? No signal. 
No touchdown. Michigan has won it. The Wolverines somehow survive when it looked like Minnesota was going to be able to retain the little brown jug. Jim Harbaugh shooing all his players off the field right now as the celebration had begun. Well, plays on the goal line are all about leverage. Who gets the ruling low? on the field is that the runner was stopped short of the goal line. That ruling is under further review. I don't think there's any way he got the ball to the end zone. Not in that mass of humanity. Watch the leverage. Watch how low that front gets for Michigan. They get underneath the Minnesota linemen and drive them back. And even though Leidner's 240 pounds, he doesn't get close to get the ball in the end zone. And I just think as valiant of an effort that Minnesota had tonight and their quarterback, those last two plays, wow. Official review still going on. What we expect, though, is that Michigan, with a goal line stand on the last play, has won this by three. What an unbelievable night by that young man. But it looks like the last time he touched it was not good enough. And everybody in the building still holding their breath, no matter who you're cheering for. Yeah. Here comes the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. The game is over. They've done it 102 times in the past for the Little Brown Jug. Not too many of them any better than this one. And Michigan survives a scare in Minneapolis to go to 6-2 and two and 3-1. And, and there comes the Little Brown Jug that Minnesota has had since last year. And now it's heading to Ann Arbor. What a ball game. What a great game. Holly's with the winning coach. Right here, right here. I think. <laughs> well, Coach Harbaugh went to you. You hadn't completed a pass all year. What were you thinking when he put you in the game? Uh, you know, I was, I was prepared to go in uh, every week. Coach coaches all the quarterbacks like they're the starting quarterback. So, you know, I felt good about the game plan. Um, I trusted my teammates and most importantly, my defense, as you can see, they came out big there. But um, coach just told me to relax, have fun, and, and just do what I do, so. You took over with about four minutes left on the clock, and you had maybe your best drive and one of your best passes of the night. How were you so effective on that drive? Well, I came to the bench and uh, got on the phone with Coach Fish, our pass game coordinator and quarterback's coach, and he just told me on the phone, he's like, look, man, just, just laugh out there, like, trust your teammates and, and, and enjoy it. And, you know, this is a game for the Little Brown Jug. It's a huge rivalry game, and, you know, it was just... I had to realize I just had to have fun with it and not be so tense and worked up about it. And, you know, that's what I did on that, dra that drive, and it worked out. Your first win for Michigan, what does it feel like? Uh, it's special. It's special. You know, I can't wait to get in the locker room and celebrate with my team. Um, you know, two weeks ago, uh, it stung, but obviously Coach Harbaugh got us to move on. And, um, you know, it's nice that the, the football gods, I guess, kind of were on our favor today. So thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. 17 of the final 19 seconds in this game will be questioned forever, maybe, about Minnesota and what they did down to the one-yard line. At any rate, great football game. Michigan goes home with a hard-fought 29-26 win.